Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Today we are going to discuss about a special institute that is NCCS Pune. Today we are going to see how to get a PhD position in National Center for Cell Science Pune and I am Dr. Vaishali, Academic Specialist at Biotechnica. Today we are not just going to see how to get a position, what are the different steps but also what are the research area that NCCS carries out and if you are interested in getting a PhD position at NCCS, what is the procedure that you need to follow? This particular video was, uh, you know, the information in this video was not only gathered through the website, but also through students of NCCS themselves. Come, let's explore the topic. This video is sponsored by Biotechnica. Biotechnica is the world's largest platform of bioscientists. You can know more about Biotechnica from www.biotechnica.org. So we have a lot of upcoming workshops. So if you're interested in upskilling yourself and getting your resume really to the level of professionals, then yes, you can go ahead and you can attend the workshops. You can get the link from the description box below or you can use this link itself. Next is about a very special internship that's going to start from the 27th of December. It is the all-in-one R&D internship. You can know more about this particular internship by calling 08050997000 or you can drop an email to info at biotechnica.org. We also have a Drona batch for all the CSIR net aspirants out there. So this CSIR net uh, coaching classes, you can pay as low as rupees 4,000 per month and you can get a one year subscription. And not only this, along with the coaching classes, you also get all the workshops for free as well as one internship. Isn't that exciting? Well, if it is for you, then do go ahead and call out to this number for more details on Drona, uh, Drona Batch or you can drop an email to info at biotechnica.org. Now, let's start with our topic today. So first of all, we are going to see what are the research areas or research themes of NCCS. So first is the biology of cancer and chronic diseases. So in this particular lab, what are the different researches that's been carried out by different professors, right? So the first is the involvement of free radicals in diabetes and cancer. The second is elucidation of cellular and molecular pathways underlying ovarian cancer. The third topic is role of inflammation, role of inflammation in autoimmunity and tolerance. The fifth topic is epigenetic reprogramming during cancer development. And the last topic of research that goes on in the biology of cancer and chronic diseases is quantitative proteomics and molecular approaches towards potential cancer biomarkers. So these are the different researches that is taken, uh, uh, taken forward in the biology of cancer and chronic diseases lab. The second lab that we're going to talk about is the pathogenesis and cellular responses, right? So what are the different research areas and what are the different researches that the faculties carry out? The first is autoimmunology, arthritis, stem cell science, and regenerative medicine. So this is the first research that happens at pathogenesis and cellular response. The second is immunoparasitology, cancer biology, as well as cell signaling. The third research is regulatory RNAs and gene expression. The last is drug delivery and translational research. So these are the different uh, researches or different labs that are there which carries out the pathogenesis and cellular response. The third uh, research theme that we're going to talk about is macromolecular structure and function. So role of complement during viral infections, right? Second is crosstalk of nuclear pore complexes or what we call as NPCs with the viral proteins. And the third is molecular mechanics of regulation of ionotropic glutamate receptors. So these are the three different labs that carry out, carries out research in the macromolecular structure and functions. 
The next research theme that we're going to talk about is cell organization and function. So the first lab that works on it is the cell biology of annulate lamellae. The second is the GTPase and intercellular communication. The third is the role of endocytosis in cell fate determination. And the last lab that works on in cell organization and function is signaling protein complexes signaling protein complexes formed by the major brain G protein, which is also a neuroscience related research that goes on. The fifth uh, research theme that we're going to talk about is microbial ecology. So here the different faculties or different labs that uh, falls under microbial ecology is the ecological restoration of bacterial community that is first. Second is the human microbiome. So we know that a lot of useful microorganisms are there in our body. So this particular lab researches on that. The third is the role of microbiome in various metabolic diseases. The next is the gut brain axis. And the last is microbial genomics, metagenomics and computational biology, which is more or less bioinformatic lab. The next uh, research theme that we're going to talk about is of course the neuroscience. So here Drosophila is used as model system to address how memory loss is maintained over time. So this is one of the research that happens in under neuroscience. The second is use of human iPSCs technology to understand cellular and molecular mechanism of Down syndrome, which is again a neuroscience topic. The third is the neurobiology of nutrient specific memories. And the fourth is how high calorie foods alter the brain to affect the learned behaviors. So this is also one research problem that is being addressed at the neuroscience research labs. Now with, with this, the, you know, the research themes and the research areas that happens in NCC is, uh, comes to an end. Now we are going to discuss about how to get a PhD at NCCS, what is the eligibility, what is the application process, what is the selection process, what are the fellowships that's required, etc. Right? So we start with the eligibility. So the first eligibility that you must have is a master's or a postgraduate degree in any branch of science, right? So you need to have a master's, it could be your MSc, M Pharma, M Tech or anything, but it has to be a master's degree. Secondly, along with your master's degree, you should have had 55% marks or equivalent GPA in your master's degree, right? So this is the second eligibility criteria. Now there is a relaxation for this 55% marks and it comes for SE, SE or ST or OBC or persons with disabilities. So these people can has have a relaxation of 5% of marks. That is, you can just have 50% of marks or equivalent GPA for being eligible to apply for a PhD position at NCCS. The second is the fellowship. So along with this eligibility that we talked about, it's necessary for you to also have a fellowship, right? So what are the valid fellowships that NCCS accepts? So the first is CSIR or UGC, UGC or ICMR or BINC, that is Bioinformatics National Certification Examination, or it can also be DST Inspire Fellowship, right? So or if you don't have any of these fellowships and if you have qualified JGWBILS, that is Joint Graduate Entrance Examination for Biology and Interdisciplinary Life Sciences, right? So this exam, which is being conducted by NCBS or TIFR, if you have qualified for this particular uh, JGEEBILS, then you are eligible for applying for PhD position at NCCS, even though you don't have any of these valid fellowships. The next is, of course, the lectureship in C, uh, CSIR UGC net. That is, apart from JRF, you also have the lectureship rank, which is not 
you know, not included uh, as an eligibility criteria uh, for PhD. And the second is, if in ICMR you have been selected for the project list only of ICMR, then again, you're not eligible for applying for PhD at NCCS. Now, following the eligibility, we are going to see what is the age limit, right? The upper age limit for JRF, it shall be 28 years, but there is relaxation as well for SC, ST women or PWD, that is persons with disabilities, there is a relaxation of five years and for OBC candidates, there's a relaxation of three years. So these are the relaxations when it comes to the upper age limit for applying for PhD at NCCS Pune. Now, what is the application and the selection process, right? So, of course, the uh, application process will be out on their website and you need to see the advertisement and then apply for uh, this particular position. So, the if you want to know when this advertisement will come out and you know how to apply and everything, do uh, click on the notification button and subscribe for Biotechnica channel because Biotechnica is a one-stop solution for all your problems in biosciences, right? So yes, first you have to apply online at the NCC from the NCCS uh, Pune's website. After you apply online, then you know you would be shortlisted Right, so a shortlisting procedure would be done if you're really eligible uh, for this PhD, then uh, the, the faculty members uh, would shortlist your candidature for further uh, process and the further process nothing but interview. So there will be two rounds of interview uh, wherein you would be facing a panel of uh, experts and they would be questioning about your interest, your specific interest in the subject that you want to choose. You can tell them what topic you're comfortable with and the questions would be asked from that topic as well. Right, so apart from that you can also see what work is going on at other labs right in NCCS itself and then what which particular lab you would be interested you know you can go see the research profile of the faculties and of the lab uh, you know members of that lab and uh, you can see if you're interested in that particular research program and that also you can express at the time of interview if you're being asked right so after your two rounds of interview finally you will get you will get your selection list and with this selection this will be your final selection and yes you can uh, you know this is the application and the selection procedure for NCCS Pune. I'm sure this video was super helpful for all those of you who are looking at uh, you know applying for a PhD position in NCCS. All the very best and thank you so much and see you all until next video.